Well, so uh, thank you for the uh, few minutes I have to talk to you today. I want to talk about what we call multimodal IT. So I really love this conference. I really love the gathering we have here because we're here talking about all kinds of new technologies and how we're, those technologies are going to change the world, right? So everything from machine learning to AI to robotics to Internet of Things to edge computing to big analytics, right? We're talking about all these technologies. And they are changing our world, right? And they're making things better. We're getting things that are, uh, the, the goals are to become much more agile in our services, in our businesses, and the types of services we're delivering to our customers and to our clients. We're making those services better for them in the way they can cons consume those. And we're able to deliver technology much faster today than we could before. And I'll give you a couple examples here in a minute. And also drive efficiency. But the interesting thing about this is if you think about it from our perspective as users, we're kind of like a hammer. I love this picture because the hammer in this picture is you and I. Our expectations for the types of services has gone way up. Every one of us has our little smart devices that we carry around, right? We're traveling around the world. Our expectations are way up here as to what those services are provided to us through this little device, right? I expect the same serviceability. I expect the same uh, um, accessibility, regardless of whether I'm sitting in Vancouver or I'm sitting in Berlin or I'm sitting in Beijing, right? So we've developed this hammer. And beyond that, we've got an inkling for the new things that are perhaps even possible, right? Think about the voice-activated uh, AI that we have today, right? We can ask our phone, and it'll tell us all kinds of information. That starts to create these new ideas of what is possible and what we can do. Well, us as a hammer, all of a sudden that's putting a lot of pressure onto the IT departments and the businesses that are going to have to deliver those services. And you can look at that two ways. It's either a hammer and they're a nail, or you can look at it and say, new great opportunities that can come about. And the very interesting thing and in a lot of conversations I have with people is those new things are happening in open source. So it becomes a question and the answer becomes leverage open source. Leverage open source. So to do that, I want to give you an example. And it's not just pulling an open source piece or an open source project and running on your way, but what we're really finding is the power is to combine those technologies together. And I just wanted to throw an example here through SUSE's application rapid delivery platform, okay? Everybody's familiar with Cloud Foundry, particularly here today in this audience. Everybody's familiar with Kubernetes. The power is putting those together. Once I put those together, I get that rapid application end-to-end -end deployment model, right, development model. By combining with Kubernetes, I've now made that much more easy to deploy. The next step is, at SUSU, we've taken containers to heart. So not only have we put those two technologies together, but you add in the, the latest notion of containerization, I've now made that so it's a much more rapid deployment model. I've made that so the footprint, memory print, all of that is reduced, which means my scalability goes up. I've also increased my importability, which means I can push that workload to wherever it needs to be. Okay? So that's just an example of how we take these latest technologies. By combining those together, I can create much more diverse and powerful services to deliver to, to my customers and to try to meet those expectations created by our hammer. Now, if you look at this from an IT perspective, what this means is they've got to go through a transformation, right? Those demands that we're placing on them means that they've got to transform to meet that. And it's not just in the application delivery space. It's there, right? But it affects the way they develop software. It, de it affects the way the applications are architected. It affects the way those applications are deployed. And it goes clear down to the very infrastructure of IT, right? Going from a data center to cloud models 
going from physical servers to virtualized servers, which we've been doing for years, going to containerized or microservices, going from monolithic applications to microservices, even our development models, right, going to a much more agile model. All of those are impacted. All of those are affected. That's quite powerful, but it's also quite challenging. So we end up in this state of what we call multimodal IT. Okay, this is where IT has an existence of traditional infrastructure, where they've got what we now call, and you're all familiar with the term, software-defined infrastructure, and rapid application-oriented architectures. Right? So I've got data center trying to live with cloud. I've got physical servers. I've got virtual servers. I've got containerized services. I've got monolithic applications. I've got microservices. I've got end-tier services. I've got, hopefully, not too many waterfall development processes anymore, but I've got agile development processes and DevOps types processes. How do I handle that? I can either create a bunch of silos, or I can figure out how to make those work together. And I want to give you an, an example here. We've only just got a couple minutes, so I can only take time to show you one, to show you what I mean by multimodal. Okay? So going back to my example here with the, with the smartphone, think of a banking application, for example. It's very common. Most likely, the apps that are running on your phone have been developed using the latest development technologies, right? Agile development, uh, microservices type style development, breaking those app downs, delivering fast, delivering often, updating often, and so forth. But on the back side, those traditional services, particularly like in a banking application, you're going to find that that data, your, your financial data, your paycheck, are sitting in some traditional infrastructure, particularly back on uh, perhaps your uh, employee data and so forth information sitting on some SAP server somewhere. Could be back on an Oracle server, for example, right? So you have this mixture of both traditional and software-defined infrastructures, and you've got to marry and meld those together. Otherwise, you end up in a siloed scenario. So what multimodal IT, what the IT department needs is bridges, right? You could go for a rip and replace model. Can't happen overnight. Instead, you want to leverage the strength of both, because there are strengths in both models. And you want to be able to leverage those. So you want to leverage and use containers, for example, in your data center. How do you do that? You want to be able to move your workloads from on-premise to the cloud. Makes total sense, right? You want to be able to take and make those workloads agile. How do I do that? Well, I haven't got time to go through the whole stack and explain the whole stack, but I wanted to take just a minute to talk about the very lowest level, right? We're here at the Linux Foundation. We talk about Linux. So let's talk about it at the operating system level. And to really take advantage of this, you need something what we call a multimodal operating system. Now, if you think a lot about Linux, it's been around for 25 years. Traditionally, years ago, what we used to do is, and if you remember, you could get Linux in a box, right? And in that box, you'd have multiple DVDs, and those DVDs contained everything in the sun, multiple desktops, every hardware device you could think of, all different types of software extensions that you could think of. And the installation basically went through and installed everything, and then the IT manager had to go through and figure out how to, to pull things out that he didn't want, turn off ports that they didn't need, tie it down so that it was secure. So it was very much install everything, take out what you didn't need. Well, we've quickly learned, and with the advent, you know, the, the huge pipes we have on the internet today, we've been able to turn that around. And it began with breaking things out, trying to make things more modular. Where to the point we are today, and going forward in the future, we've flipped that around. So the notion today is, let's install the smallest footprint that you need and add, make it very, very simple to add the services that you want, okay? So we call this a modular 
operating system. And it turns out that it's very purpose, purpo, excuse me, tongue tied there for a bit, perfect for a multimodal environment. And let me show you why. Okay? So in, in a multimodal environment, you've got your traditional infrastructure and you've got your software defined infrastructure. What this means is I have devices that could be as, as small as a Raspberry Pi, right? All the way up to devices that are as large as a supercomputer. So the Raspberry Pi, I want a very small, very dedicated footprint up to the supercomputer where I'm gonna have, take advantage of a very large memory or, and perhaps storage footprint. But I wanna tailor that so I can use my, my small devices for edge. I can install and, and do very particular devices. Let's say, for example, uh, running an HPC environment where I'm adding on machine learning, right? I can tailor that operating system and tune it so I can run it in a public cloud environment like Microsoft Azure. I can tailor that environment for the latest constructs with memory, so like NVE or NVM. Uh, where I can take advantage of that, that non-volatile memory to run uh, processes for data analytics, for example. I can take advantage of the strength of the architectures in the mainframe to run those legacy applications. I can take advantage of, of the scalability and storability, compute intensive power that you can provide through Linux all the way up to the supercomputing environment. That's why you're seeing Linux spread across all those, giving me that modularity where I can focus and tune Linux for those particular environments is the strength that we have. Now, the second part of this is I could do that with different operating systems, of course, right? But the power here is with SUSE now, we're delivering all of those all the way from the Raspberry Pi up to the supercomputer, all in the same source code. Now, you might not think that's too important until you start to think about spectra, meltdown, and all the other issues that keep popping up. From an IT's perspective, I've got to maintain those. I've got to understand my risk. I've got to understand my footprint on each type of those devices and where I'm at. So by maintaining that source code across the different architectures, the hardware platforms, and so forth, it makes it much more simple for me to maintain to manage and to grow. So I often get the question, what's going to be the next big thing, right? Showed that circle up in front and, and I know when they ask the question, they're wondering what's going to be the next big thing around machine, after machine learning or after Kubernetes or after containers or so forth. And I'm sure there'll be some buzzwords pop up somewhere. But I think for us right now, the next big thing that's going to be the fun challenge for us that we need to focus on is the need for, for agility and the speed to scale. And for us to be able to do that requires that we have an operating system that enables us to do that. And that's the way SUSE Linux Enterprise 15, which was just uh, delivered a couple weeks ago, enables us to do. It gives us that platform to scale from the very small to the very large and gives us that bridge so that we can use it in the different environments all the way from a legacy environment to our latest agile development. Doing that gives us the speed to scale that we need, gives us that mobility to develop those rapid applications and to, and to deliver those, combine those technologies in a modular way where we can tune those, we can tailor them, and we can deliver the services that our customers are after. And yet bring the simplicity that we need to support those in a secure, adaptive environment and deliver those services that we depend on in a secure manner. So I thank you for your time and, and for your attention. Thank you.